This is it. This is the magical solution to make tree sort run fast, no matter what the input data actually is. You're watching Sorting Algorithms Plus Plus, Episode Four: AVL Trees. Hello and welcome back to Sorting Algorithms Plus Plus. Now, in the last episode, we've actually taken a look at tree sort. Essentially, we've taken a very slight look at the difference between an unbalanced and a balanced tree, and we decided that, well, balanced trees are kind of important. That leads us up to our content today, which is, of course, essentially how to create a self balancing binary search tree. Now, at this point, I just want to mention that there are many strategies to do this, and we are actually only going to cover one. And the reason for that very simply is because that's the only one I learned, and that's the one I'm very confident about, which is why that's the one I'm going to share with you. This particular type of self-balancing binary search tree is called the AVL tree, and that actually stands for the Adelson, Velsky, and Landis tree. Essentially, of course, these are the guys who created this entire algorithm, so we have to thank them. Also, I'm sorry if I bungled up that name, I probably did, but you'll be happy to know that eventually, you'll probably be better at implementing the algorithm than actually saying its name. But anyway, essentially, here's what we're gonna do. This algorithm works by augmenting the insertion process. So in a nutshell, how this algorithm works is, every time you insert a new item, it will check to see if the tree is still balanced. If it is unbalanced, it will make certain rotations to actually fix things and make sure it's balanced again. By performing this comparison for every insertion operation, essentially, you're guaranteed a tree that is nice and balanced. So, I've been throwing around these words a lot without actually defining them. What is a balanced tree and what makes a tree unbalanced? Now, you saw this particular tree last lesson. Obviously, this is unbalanced. However, there are more subtle cases of whether a tree is balanced or not. So let us take a look at the concept of height and basically how we can use that information to decide whether or not a tree is balanced. So what is the height of a tree? Well, obviously, the height of a tree is how far it extends vertically. Now, the proper way to actually count the number is to actually start from the leaf nodes, give them all a height of zero. Essentially, this height propagates upwards, and as that happens, every step it takes, it does an addition. Which means, of course, in a nutshell, the height of a node is the maximum of its two child nodes plus one. So essentially, if we were to just zoom in to one part of a tree, let us ignore everything and assume that we've calculated things up to this point. So now we want to calculate the height of the node itself. To do that, the first thing we must do is to pick out the maximum of its two child heights. We don't want to take the smaller value, seeing as that that will not give you a correct representation of the maximum height of the tree. We always want to pick the larger value, which is why in this case, we're just going to ignore the height one. What this means is the height of this particular node is going to be three. Now, the more eagle-eyed among you would have noticed that I started the calculation from zero. Does that mean that an empty tree has a height of negative one? Well, yes. While this might seem a little counterintuitive, that is, in fact, the convention. So I hope you can kind of understand what I'm doing here. The height of a tree is propagated from the bottom to the top. And when we finish doing this, we're going to look at the roots and we're going to decide, okay, this is how tall the tree is. And that is precisely the information that the AVL tree algorithm needs to decide whether or not a tree is balanced. In fact, it does a simple calculation on the height information of two nodes to determine the balance factor. And here's how you calculate the balance factor. The balance factor of any node is essentially the height of its left child minus the height of its right child. If your final balance factor is negative one, zero, or one, the tree is balanced. If the height is negative two or two, the tree is not balanced, and we have to do something to make it balanced again. Now, let's go back and take a look at what this actually means. The balance factor is the height of the left child minus the height of the right child. Which means, of course, that the information we're going to use to determine whether or not a tree is balanced is actually whether one subtree is taller than the other by a height of two. 
So essentially, if one particular subtree is taller or shorter by a height of 1, that is okay, that is no problem, the tree is still balanced. A tree is only unbalanced if that height disparity is 2. And that is exactly what an AVL tree is trying to achieve. It wants to prevent height disparities of anything greater than 1. And this is throughout the entire tree. So alright, let's say we've done our height calculations, we've done our balance factor calculation, and we realize that hey, this needs balancing. What do we do? Well, I've already said the word a couple of times. We're going to have to perform certain rotations to actually fix this issue. There are four different cases, and each case requires its own action. To fix the imbalance, we actually have to use a combination of left and or right rotations. So before we formally apply this, let us take a look at the actual rotations. Essentially, a rotation looks something like this. Now, this might look a little bit confusing to you, but don't be confused. Essentially, a rotation is as simple as it sounds. When you have two nodes like this, a left rotation does this. Note that the parent becomes the child, the child becomes the parent. Similarly, a right rotation does this. Exactly the same thing happens here. The parent becomes a child, the child becomes the parent. Now, as for the subtrees of these two particular nodes, notice how essentially however you move them, their relative order stays. Now, notice how I've actually color-coded these subtrees. One is red, one is green, one is blue, in that particular order. After I perform a rotation, one of the subtrees will skip from one guy to the other, but their relative order stays the same. That is, red, green, and blue still happen from left to right, like they were originally. Now, this is particularly important because if we don't do things like that, obviously we will ruin the actual binary search tree property, that is of course, left side must be smaller than the actual node, and the actual node must be smaller than the right side. Now, we cannot ruin this property, which means where the nodes are relative to each other horizontally must always stay the same. And that is exactly what we must strive to do here. So now that you know how a left and a right rotation works, let us now jump into using balance factors to decide which rotations we have to make. As mentioned earlier, there are four unique types of imbalance, and each has its own rebalancing strategy. The general approach is this. First, we need to get the balance factor of the subtree we are inspecting. We then need to decide which is the heavier side. Then, we have to perform another balance factor calculation on the taller of the two children, before we can decide which case we have encountered. So, let's start with one of the simpler cases. In this case, our balance factor starts out as positive 2. Since we calculate balance factor by taking left minus right, clearly, this means that the subtree we are looking at is left heavy. We proceed to the left child and we do another balance factor calculation. If the balance factor is also positive, in other words, its value is positive 1, what this means is, this particular node also has a taller left subtree. This is called the left-left case. The name of course describes these two edges. To balance this, you simply perform a right rotation on the root of the subtree. This pulls the second node up, making it the root. Everything else settles to the left and right of this node, balancing things out. Now, what if our first balance factor is positive 2, but the second one is negative 1? Visually, this case looks something like this, and it's called the left-right case. Unfortunately, one balancing operation isn't enough to fix this. However, one balancing operation is enough to reduce this to a known problem. Watch. By performing a left rotation on the left child node, we turn the left-right case into the left-left case. So now, we are simply using a known solution. By performing a right rotation on the topmost node, we have balanced the tree. The two more cases we have yet to look at are in fact simply the mirror images of the two cases we've just discussed. The right-right case has a balance factor of negative 2 at the top, which means the node is right-heavy. The right-child node has a balance factor of negative 1, of course, meaning that it too is right heavy. We perform a left rotation to fix this, and the tree is balanced. The right left case has a balance factor of negative 2 at the top, and positive 1 in its right child. We reduce this to the right right case by simply performing a right rotation on the right child node. From this point, a left rotation on the topmost node balances everything else. So let's summarize. There are four different cases. We look at a balance factor of the node we are concerned with, 
and decide which side is heavier. Then, we go down to that heavier side and get its balance factor as well. A plus 2 plus 1 case is called left left and can be balanced with a single right rotation. A minus 2 minus 1 case is called right right and like a mirror image of the left left case, it can be balanced with a single left rotation. A plus 2 minus 1 case is the left right case. Doing a left rotation on the left child node and then a right rotation on the whole thing balances it out. Similarly, a minus 2 plus 1 case is the right left case. To balance this, right rotate the right child node, and then left rotate the whole thing. If you have trouble remembering this, think of it this way. The name tells you what is making the tree unbalanced. So we want to perform rotations counter to what the name says. For example, consider the left right case. It tells you that the lower node is right heavy, and to counter that, you do a left rotation. That turns it into a left left case, implying left heaviness. We fix this by doing a right rotation. And yes, that is essentially all the balancing operations that can be done on an AVL tree. Now, I know this episode has run a little bit long, but we are near the end, so hang in there. As mentioned earlier, essentially balancing operations happen during insertion. What this means is, in a tree, every time after you insert a new node, you're going to actually redo certain height calculations. You will then calculate balance factor at every node from the point you've inserted your new node. And every time you encounter a balance factor of negative 2 or positive 2, you're going to actually have to do the rotations to balance the tree. For every insertion, essentially you only need to balance once. Everything else should remain balanced. When we have a balanced tree, we are guaranteed that every insertion actually takes log n time. This, of course, is a result of, you know, when you insert a new item, it doesn't have to look at everything else that is already there. And what this means is we have guaranteed a worst case or n log n time for tree sort. And this very lengthy episode basically wraps up what we've been doing for trees. We've taken a look at how we can make tree sort fail. We've taken a look at balanced trees in this episode. So now you know how you can actually guarantee that tree sort actually takes all n log n time. Well, that's all there is for this episode of Sorting Algorithms Plus Plus. I'm sorry it ran a little bit long, but everything I covered today is extremely important to understanding the entire picture, so I hope you don't mind. If you have any comments, queries, or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out the official Twitter account for this channel at twitter.com slash 0612tv. As always, I appreciate every like, favorite, and subscription you give me. But until next time, you're watching 0612tv.